And we are back. What is up, Hall of Famers on YouTube? I am Card Shop Eric, coming to you live from Hall of Fame Baseball Cards in Arcadia, California. We are kicking off Friday night personal breaks here. I'm going to be your host all night long for as long as we can go. And uh, we got some new discount codes for tonight. Thanks again to everyone who joined us yesterday for open, our little opening day special personal break day. We had a little bit of fun with some of you. That was great. Um, but today's Friday, and we'll also be live Saturday. We're normally live Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, starting at 4 p.m. Um, we got discount codes for you tonight. Let me mention that. On occasion, we like to throw out some discount codes. For people that might be popping into our YouTube channel, you can also find out those discount codes by following us on Twitter at HOF Baseball Card, singular. Um, and we tweet some of the discount codes for the night out there too. Um, but tonight's discount codes, you can see on the right hand side of your screen, right over where my hand is, we got Tops Definitive ready to rock. You can buy it by the box if you want a full box, or we're rocking a group break. We're just going to do random cards. A random card group break, there's eight cards in a box, all of them are hits, and so there's eight spots. Normally, it should be 250 a spot, folks, but if you use the code DEF at checkout, you'll get $50 off each one of those spots, and we're doing those spots for 200 bucks a spot, which is crazy. Don't tell anybody, but that puts it at about $1,600 a box. So jump into some spots. Let's have some definitive fun tonight. We see a lot of other people having some fun with Definitive, and we'd like to join the party there. Um, we also got some of the uh, TriStar New York Dynasty autographed baseballs for any New York Yankees fans. Um, you enter the code NY at checkout, you'll get $20 off the balls. Um, find some New York legends, current and uh, veteran and Hall of Fame and no longer living legends. Um, how about $75 off encased football personal break boxes tonight? Use the code ENC for $75 off encased football boxes tonight. And uh, there was a little snafu that I happened to catch on the Prism basketball packs. Uh, unfortunately, since those came out, we had the wrong, the incorrect price on those. Um, so those packs have been already discounted $100. Plus, we're giving you an extra $30 off that price tonight. Prism Basketball Packs for $200 tonight. Use the code PZM, and uh, you'll get that final final price of $200 a pack on Prism Basketball. Let's rip some of those. And don't forget, when you're signed up with HOFBC Team Rewards on our website, you, you get 5% back credit on all your purchases. Plus, we offer free shipping on all personal break items. Uh, what other new products do we have? Definitive on the left-hand side of the screen here. I mentioned Definitive. I mentioned the New York Auto Baseballs. Uh, Inception Baseballs. Excuse me, Inception Baseball Cards from Tops. I have two boxes in front of me for Mike B. But those are still current. Heritage Baseball, Prism Basketball, and Case Football. Friday night, folks. Mike B is kicking us off. Thanks again, Mike B, for kicking us off again. Who's going to be second in line? CJ's going to be dropping some links. I'll even maybe drop a link right now. Let me see if I can drop some links. There we go. Look at me. Look at me go. I just dropped a bunch of links right to our personal break pages. You'll find our group breaks, personal break boxes there. You guys know how it works. Let's get to ripping. Mike B, thanks again. So what's up to people in the group chat? Group chatters, uh, tell me if your team won their opening day game yet. But my team did not, unfortunately. But yeah, there's 161 games to play, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, Mike B, starting off with Eddie Rosario here. Evan says the Brewers won on a walk-off. Yeah, Bubble Pug announced that yesterday. <clears throat> Here's Luis Robert, second up. Jesus Sanchez, rookie. You got a little Buster Posey. You got a little Christian Pache, green rookie. Paul Goldschmidt, green. And the hit in this first box for Mike B. How about Will Smith, speaking of Dodgers? Pink, 31 of 99. 
What's so everybody pop, popping up into the group chat, especially my boy Soup. What's up, Soup Man? Padres one says Josh P. Buckos one. I guess that's Pirates. Cubbies lost. Robert Parker Jr. says White Sox. Uh, Red Sox lost, unfortunately, for Chris B. And yes, I am back for more tonight. This is a nice Will Smith card for you, Mike. Let's move on to your second box. <clears throat> uh, we have these four discount codes on the right-hand side of your screen for tonight. That's what we're offering for tonight and uh, probably tomorrow night as well, while supplies last. So take advantage of those, because they won't be around next week. But let's get that definitive group break going. Come on, folks. We're offering a great, great price on definitive group break spots. You probably won't see that price anywhere. So tell your friends. If you're on Twitter, be sure to retweet, retweet some of our uh, tweets and help us out. It's that easy. Just a touch of a button. You can help us kind of promote what we're doing here. Uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter at HOF Baseball Card. What's up, Kevin L? Hope everything's doing well with you, too. All right, Mike B, you got Casey Mize, Jacob DeGrom, Whit Merrifield, Charlie Blackman, Aaron Judge on the purple out of 150. Garrett Cole on the green. And Leody Tavares on card rookie autograph with the Texas Rangers 005 out of 125. What's up, Steven S? Hey, thanks to Mike B for kicking us off today, but we're going to need uh, some more products in the lineup. Michael McD, long time no see. How you doing, buddy? We'd love to have some people. I'm, uh, I'm ripping for some folks tonight. Giving Card Shop Matt a little bit of a, of a break this evening. And yesterday evening, for that matter. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot of discount codes. We got some new products uh, available to get ripped. And we will be waiting for your participation. That's how these shows work, folks. I would love to be able to just sit here and just like a... Like a woodchuck, just rip through cards gang, on my own. But we'd be out of business real fast if I was doing that. Because I can rip pretty fast, as you guys know. I wonder how long it would take me to rip every box in this shop right now. That's, a, that's, that's an interesting question. I bet I could get it done uh, pretty quick. Couple hours, says CJ. <laughs> um, probably longer than that. But, uh, yeah, here we are, folks. What else do you want to know? How's everybody doing in the group chat? <clears throat> and who's going to be next up in line? That's what I want to know. Robert Parker Jr. asks, are you going to fumble when football starts again? I don't know if I'm going to be playing football anymore. I'm, I'm out of shape. I'm just trying to see if I can hit a softball again. <laughs> Happy Friday, Sacento. Justin BL, of course you get a Yankee auto ball when I have no money. Well, we are offering a little that $20 off code, so you will save 20 bucks off of that this weekend if you use that code NY on those balls this weekend. So that'll help you out a little bit. What's up, Richard Martinez? Richard Martinez might jump on a New York Yankees autograph ball uh, just to check it out. Use that discount code, Richard, if you do. All discount codes are listed on the right-hand side of your screen right here. $50 off definitive spots. You'll get definitive spots for $200 a spot on a $2,000 box. So you could essentially buy all eight spots and get the box for sixteen hundred bucks right now if you want. But we're willing to let a couple of those go for cheap. So 
Tell your friends. Also, the New York Balls, $20 off. The Encased Football, $75 off. Encased Football. And uh, the Prism Packs. We had the incorrect price on those. Uh, they were at $329 incorrectly. They were supposed to be at $229. So we're offering $30 off of that price this weekend. So you get Prism Basketball Packs for $200 a pop. So we can rip some of those at the right price now. And we'd love to do any and or all of that. Dusting off my table. <clears throat> Richard Martinez is asking, where do you enter the discount codes? That's going to be on the checkout page, right, CJ? Yeah. Checkout page somewhere, Richard. I, I think uh, you might want to, I don't know. I've actually never used a discount code personally on my own website. So I'm no help for you. Sorry. Is it just as simple as entering it on the checkout page, CJ? Really? Waiting for information to be relayed here. Gotta be somewhere right there at checkout. Apply apply discount or whatever. So go to checkout. It's probably different on your phone. I show summary. So can I show this on, on the screen real quick? That's the wrong product, but. Is there anything just, personal that you don't want people to see here? I don't care. All right. I guess on, on CJ's phone, it kind of looks like this. There's a button that says hide order summary or show order summary. And that when you when you drop that down, that's where you enter the gift card or discount code. So just look on the checkout page. It's got to be somewhere. Should be pretty semi obvious. Click around, you'll find it. Soup is offering some uh, description before you get to the payment page. There's a bar where you can enter the discount code. Sacento saying right side of checkout page under the item name. And so there you go. So there's a couple ideas for you, Richard. Shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, if Soup can figure it out, anybody can. If I had a guitar pick, I'd play some guitar, but there's no pick here for me anymore. No guitar pick. So what's up? It's 13 minutes past the hour. We're looking for some people to uh, jump into personal breaks on a Friday. It's baseball season, folks. And wondering what uh, people are into. What are people into right now? Is anybody thinking about jumping on something? What spot gone? Some, uh, one of the definitive spots has been sold, I guess. Who jumped on that first? Dan Clay. Dan if you're listening to my voice. Thank you. Dan Clay breaking the cherry on the definitive. <clears throat> set up a little there we go definitive spots left seven So there we go. There's a little countdown until we get to rip that box of definitive. Sacento asking, why don't we do the prize wheel or Plinko anymore? Well, it's for a few reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is because it's it became way too difficult. As the market shot up in the last year, it became way too difficult to find... Because there's, there's, what, 18 spots on the prize wheel. It became way too difficult to find 18 products at 18 similar price points to be able to offer. Um, 
it just became way too difficult. And so we had to nix the prize wheel. We'd have to we'd have to be doing like two hundred dollar prize wheel spins, <laughs> you know. Uh, it just became too difficult, unfortunately. And until uh, we found out find out another way around it, we've kind of had our hands full with other things and haven't been able to bring it back. Um, it'd be nice to implement that again at some point, maybe during the summer. But hopefully we can. Uh, yeah, maybe get a smaller wheel. Don't worry. We've thought about it all. Don't worry. Like I said, we've had our hands full. And uh, we, we unfortunately have a lot bigger fish to fry right now with our business. We're super short-staffed right now. And there's a lot a lot bigger issues we're, we're juggling right now, unfortunately. But, <clears throat> yeah, Sesseto, I hear you, man. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people have been priced out of collecting the hobby right now. Um it's 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 a lot more costly than it used to be and it's it's currently kind of a rich man's hobby you know I hate to say that it, it does make me a little bit sad um, for collectors like myself or, or other people that just have a regular budget that just wanted to just just enjoyed collecting on a on their own budget but you know to collect uh, the it's just harder now um, the demand went up the supply is still down and and uh, with the popularity of the market right now, that's just the way it is. Probably won't stay that way forever. You know, we've been in the business 40 years. We've seen the industry go up and down for 40 years. And about every 10 years, give or take, it has the upswing. And then, you know, and it'll downswing and then it'll come back up about every 10 years. And uh, it's just never been as high in our 40 years, we haven't have never seen it as high as it is now. So, <clears throat> not sure what you mean by that, says Sento. People are normalizing prices, which isn't good. I'm not sure what you mean by that, normalizing prices. Maybe you could explain that if you like. Um, but it's, you know, it's no different than any other market that blows up. You know, any other market that would have a, a surge in popularity would have the same issues. And people that are used to be paying a certain prices are going to be angry that the prices have gone up and blah, blah. Take uh, the gun industry. Guns and ammunition right now, especially ammunition, is hard to get. So the cost of ammunition has gone up. And people that have been using ammunition for years are upset that they're paying 50, 40, 50, 60 cents per, per round now. I mean, other than, you know, they, they used to be paying whatever. 10, 15, 20, 25 cents a round, you know? So eh, that's just a random current uh, example from the top of my head, but <clears throat> current market prices. I'm not sure, Sacento, what you meant by using the word normalizing, though. Maybe you mis maybe misused that word, but current, he just says, just the current market prices Prism basketball hobby today versus last year. It's just the it's just the way prices fluctuate. I don't know what you mean by normalizing, so I can't really consider that. Um, but yeah, the prices have fluctuated. Prices are high right now. Perhaps five years from now, I would say prices won't be as high. But you never know. You never know if if uh, some of the major manufacturers keep uh, promoting to to additional celebrities that aren't uh, normally collectors and having their fans start getting into or getting interested in collecting, it's going to be a problem until the market loses popularity again. Uh, and that's the big difference between our market and a lot of other industries is we are one of the few industries that the product is manufactured to be rare. Everything else, they kind of can print on demand. Honda needs a thousand more Civics down in SoCal, they can make them. McDonald's needs a billion more cheeseburgers, they can make them. You know, name anything else, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's another big difference between our industry and a lot of other industries is that the supply probably won't change. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of the manufacturers have added additional product lines is to try to fulfill demand. You know, they got so many people clamoring for cards right now. Um, and they can't print more Tops Definitive 
but they can create a similar style product that has a different print run. You follow me? Um, they can't print more, you know, Topps Chrome, but they can invent Topps Chrome Black that has its own print run. Um, so I hope anybody who's listening to my voice is getting a little bit of education right now. It's just the way it is. It, it is, you know, it's just the way it is. I wish it. I wish everybody could afford cards, but uh, when the market's high, you know, unfortunately that's the way it goes. Um, and we are we are struggling because our our personally our business hasn't really had a lot of super high end clientele guys that are spending eight nine hundred a thousand eleven hundred twelve hundred dollars on a box of cards, you know. Um, so we're struggling to try to find the clientele of people that are interested in products at the current price. So it's hard, not just for collectors on your end, but it's hard for the smaller retailers like us. Um, it's hard for the manufacturers to try to keep up and, 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 and please everybody like they try to. Um, it's just difficult all around when everybody is crowding to get the same thing. Are we going to rip any cards or uh, what's happening? We could just chat here, I guess, but I'd like to be on ripping, you know. Um, let me read the chat for a minute here. Landon says, I remember you could go to Target any day and find cards. Now you have to go to the guest services and hope they have some in the back. And that's what, that's another, you know, thing that happens when our industry goes up. You know, people start, you know, buying out the Targets before everybody else gets there in the morning. And that's just what happens. Um, the early bird gets the worm. You can't blame them. You know, if, if they leave it for someone else, then the someone else is going to go do it and make a profit off it. You know, it's, it's just the way it is. When things get valuable, people, people start trying to go where the money is. So Sento says, I guess I used the incorrect word, but it's mostly due to the flippers buying up product causing inflation. That's kind of what I was getting at, talking about outside celebrities and people that aren't normally collectors who have been attracted to this hobby because of the big money that's all of a sudden in it. You know, you could buy a box of Tops Transcendent if you got twenty-five grand, which is very little money to rich, rich, rich people. You could buy a Tops Transcendent for yourself and have a box full of one ones You know, um, manufacturers follow the trend. He says raise their prices, and we all have to compete, Sasento. You know, I don't want to have to be selling football boxes at eight hundred dollars a box, but we have to be competitive with the market. You know. Um, and that's why I'm saying now we're forced to try to have to somehow seek out clientele that can pay $800 for a box of six football cards. Um, and it's, it hasn't been easy for us. Um, and as you can tell, our, our live streams have been slower since the price is jacked up. Um, our community, our clientele just hasn't been able to, uh, to really jump in at those higher levels. But there's still some people that have been supportive, and we're obviously thankful for that. I'm going to continue reading the chat here. Thinking about buying 21 Inception, do you think I should? Says Wyatt. Inception's great. If you have the money for it, try a box of Inception. Nice looking product. I don't like people buying up retail and then reselling it for a higher price. Josh P., that, again, that's just a reality of the situation, unfortunately. You don't have to like it, I suppose. But that's just it's just going to happen. In any industry where something goes up, there's always going to be people that try to snake it and, and get a profit before someone else does. And if you don't like it, you can uh, get in line with them at four in the morning at Target when the sh when the shipment comes, <clears throat> and then buy them all up and open them all right in front of those people and tell them to suck it. <laughs> How has 2020 Optic Football been selling for you guys, Michael McD? Asking. Uh, I've been out of town for the last couple weeks, personally, but uh, I don't think we've sold much of that. Like I said, for us personally, we don't quite yet have the clientele for a lot of that higher end stuff. It, it's probably selling a little bit better in store, but it's not flying off the shelf. At, at what's the price on those CJ's Optic Football? Do you know, eleven hundred, twelve hundred. He's saying. I mean, I you know. <laughs> That's yeah. That's uh, that's it's difficult, you know, for anybody. It's difficult for most people to spend twelve hundred dollars on a box of football cards. 
twelve hundred dollars on anything is a lot of money for like ninety percent of the world. <laughs> um, and it's, so it's become difficult for all of us. And uh, yeah, the people that are uh, able to take more advantage of these high prices are those that already have a good group breaking clientele in place or a good high dollar clientele in place. Shane R. jumping on one of the newly priced Prism Basketball. I don't know if you heard me talking earlier, Shane, that uh, we had these incorrectly priced for the last week or so at $329. And I was like, that's way too high. <laughs> so we repriced it, and we're offering $30 bucks off. Hopefully, I hope, hopefully, Shane, you noticed the discount code, and you got $30 bucks off. And you only paid 200 bucks for this pack. But let's check it out. You got Marc Gasol. Pokusevsky, rookie. Norman Powell. Ja. Bagley. Snellsey. We've got Ingram on the backside. Dort. Royce O'Neal. And Cameron Johnson. And then behind Snellsey, we're looking at... Steve Nash, a little fearless. Steve Nash, fearless, card number 11. And behind Snell, Mark Gasol again, the, the silver refractor version, silver prism. We're doing the player of the day for team two. So if you put Jaw, Anthony Edwards, or Eric Gordon, you get into the player of the day. So he pulled the Jaw, so he'll be into this week's player of the day. Okay, so I'm just being informed that we're also doing the player of the day promotion in store and I guess here during personals. And I guess one of the players of the day today is Ja Morant. So... Uh, Shane R., you're going to be entered into our Hall of Fame uh, in-shop player of the day, daily winner thing. I guess we'll probably have a couple bonus packs or something. Yeah, you'll get some bonus packs. You'll get a couple of those little bonus packs with this order. So there you go. So that was cool. That's a little bonus. But thanks, Shane, for jumping on one of those. I'm glad the price is right for you. Who else? Still got seven spots left in definitive. Oh, six spots left in definitive. Discount code is not working for TriStar Baseball. All right, Brandon, let me take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, Matty set it up, but he probably did it incorrectly. Just give me a second to uh, edit this. Six spots left in definitive. Let me check this discount code here.
Brand, uh, Brandon, who was that? Brandon H. was asking about the discount for the TriStar New York balls. CJ tried it on his phone. He said the discount's working. It's just not... It should be, it should be, it should be fine. Yeah, he said it should be fine. Enter the code NY in the uh, appropriate spot. Yeah. So here, he did it right here. He entered the code NY and it gave him, you know, 119 as opposed to 139. Plus tax for him because he's in Cali. Up there. Oh yeah, and here up at the top, this top thing it says. I don't know if you can see that, but right there, so from one fifty one thirty nine to one thirty. So it should be fine. Should be fine. All those codes should be good to go. Now the code itself is in quotes. The code itself on the right hand side of your screen is the code. The code is is in quotes. The code is NY, and that'll get you twenty dollars off the New York balls. For here, the code is ENC, which equals $75 off in case football, and so on and so forth. My bad, he says, no worries. <clears throat> Let me see here. Going back to the group chat here, I, I was enjoying that conversation about the market and stuff. Um, let's see, Stargazer says, our Walmart doesn't have limits. I just started on Heritage Set. They had four boxes on the shelf, and I just bought two. So there you go. There's one person in their group chat who is alleging that they left some product on the shelf for other people. Uh, ben, Ben Dover. Nice. <laughs> That's like an old Simpsons joke. Um, let's see. Stargazer. Maybe all these 91 Upper Deck baseball I got will go up. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I've heard that more than once from people here. Uh, Michael McD trying to save up because he loves optic, but he understands the chase and the trends. Maybe it'll taper down soon. Yeah, who knows? I don't see it tapering down at all this season or even next. I, I would say, like I said, you know, if we're at the top of the peak, it's probably going to take another couple years for it to bell out a little bit, to be honest and flatten back out, and even when it does go back down, it might stay a little bit higher than the old low, you know? It might continue to be a little bit higher. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we may never see prices that we were seeing two, three years ago. We may, may never see prices like that again. I don't know. Anybody's guess, really. Al saying it'd be better a little cheaper market if there was competition instead of one company owning a specific license for that sport. Yeah, and that's been another argument amongst especially hobby retailers. You know, um, when you have to when you have to buy products from a, a company that's monopolizing an industry, it's very difficult because you're at the mercy and you have to buy whatever they tell you to buy, basically. So because uh, the manufacturers have independent licensing with the, the, the different leagues, you know, all those manufacturers can basically do whatever the heck they want to the hobby. Um, and that's another big, that's another big thing from a, from a, you know, internal hobby perspective. It really is. But again, there's nothing we can do about it. That's way above my pay grade. I don't know anybody at MLB that I can go talk to and, 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 you know, tell them our situation as retailers and as collectors. And how that, you know, having uh, just one company licensed is, is really kind of hurts the hobby and hurts the natural competition that we used to have in the hobby. Um, let's see what else we got. Brandon H., excited for tribute. So, Sento, did I go anywhere for vacation? I've got uh, some friends up in Idaho that I've, I've gone to visit on occasion. It's just a nice place to get out of town. So that's where I've that's where I've gone lately. Uh, why is it making us select a shipping option? I thought it was free. If you're having to select a shipping option, it's probably because whoever set up the the product page forgot to make it a free shipping item. Uh, let us which items that's happening for, and we can make those corrections. What's the difference between ninety one upper deck and stuff printed today? Uh, 91 Upper Deck was kind of printed like McDonald's cheeseburgers. You know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, Topps Upper Deck, Fleer, they were all just making cards. They were just made because it, it was nothing that was, 
There was no serial numbered cards. There was no autographs. There was no relics. It was literally just pictures on paper. So they could just print them out according to demand, you know, and in retrospect, you know, 30 years later when people are pissed because all their 91 upper deck doesn't have value for whatever reason, some of the companies have decided to try to take that into consideration and now they're not printing as many cards. Um, and another difference is just the card quality, the card stock quality, you know, all the types and just a lot of other big differences. Um, Jack Miller, they made a lot of it. Yeah. Idaho was cool for sure. Watch the card. Prism basketball box or pack. Can you check the prism basketball boxes and packs and make sure they're on the free shipping profile? Do you know how to do that, CJ? I don't have access to that. Great. Okay, one second. Let me let me give a check on that. I'll be right back, folks. Okay, who was asking about Prism? That was uh, Watch the Corners. Uh, double check that again. It should be good to go for free shipping on the Prism stuff now. And if that ever happens again in the future, just uh, mention it. Hey, XYZ, uh, you know, mention it like you just did and somebody will figure it out. Thank you for your patience. Going back to the group chat here. Yeah, I know, junk wax, but they're doing a lot of that today too. Well, you'd be surprised, Sacento. You might think they're printing a lot of a lot of cards, but they're just they're just printing more um, more styles of cards. They're like so for Topps Base Brand. Let's let's take Topps Base Brand. I, I I would be willing to bet that they're printing less Topps Base Brand in 2021 than they were printing in 1991. You know, I I couldn't tell you the numbers, and I don't know for sure because I don't have that kind of a connection, and, and I don't even think Topps releases that kind of information to anybody, but. Um, but I would be willing to bet that, that, yeah, they're probably printing overall less cards now than they were 30, 40 years ago. Because, like I said, they're taking into, they have taken into consideration trying to make stuff that retains its value in the future. Now you'll see on the back of any tops, uh, on the back of any tops product, you'll see this little, this little thing on the back that says tops does not in any manner make any representations as to whether its cards will attain any future value. So they don't come out and say, yes, we guarantee that these cards are gonna be worth money in the future, because you can't, you can't guarantee anything like that. But they are trying to print less in hopes that that helps. But it just makes it more expensive and it makes it harder to get. And I don't know. Long-term, only thing that's going to be worth something are the numbered cards, autos, and SPs. Most likely, yeah. Um, but that's why those are going for a lot more money now, too. We have a Cabrian Hayes action variation short print from the new Stupid Heritage on our shelf right now asking $120 for a Cabrian Hayes. Who the heck is Cabrian Hayes? He's a pirate, for God's sake. <laughs> at $120 for an action variation right now. But that's why, because people are clamming for the SPs, the numbered cards, the short printed variations. Because in a time where Tops and Panini and Upper Deck are printing less cards, the ones that are short printed are even less than that. So 
And again, nobody has any idea whether anything's going to be worth anything in the future. And that's why there's a big flipping market. Because now guys are coming in with bigger money and saying, I don't care about 10 years from now what this card's worth. It's worth 50 grand to me right now, you know, or whatever. Let me just, let me just get a couple more here. I actually like these talks too. You're like a paid hobby therapist, says Michael McD. For that, I'll buy some 19 Bowman. Thanks, Mike. I got your box right here. I want to say what's up to Dan N. Was listening to the convo earlier and thought I'd chime in. When prices go up, it's due to supply and demand. Basic economics. Absolutely. And that started right at the beginning of the uh, conversation, too. What's up, Danny, by the way? Thanks for jumping in on Definitive. Six spots left in the Definitive group break, folks. We got the best price on those spots in the country. Say what? Four left. Oh, four, four left, I'm told. Hold on. Let me edit that. Let me edit that. Four spots left before we get to open a box of Definitive. Cool. Thanks to Joanne, who jumped on a couple. Um, Dan DeClay continues by saying, for a, smaller re for, for a small retailer, gross revenue only goes up if people buy. Exactly. But the margins are not affected as much, so it's not like a car job is netting a higher profit. Exactly. Woodruff. What's up, Woodruff? 1989 Upper Deck changed the quality of cards for the next couple of years. Absolutely. Uh, then 1991 Stadium Club came out at 4 bucks a pack, and that was so high back then. Yeah. But they came out with that. It was a super higher you know, card photo technology and the high gloss and the gold leaf on there. You know, they definitely Upper Deck and uh, Upper Deck 1989 and Top Stadium Club, I think, were two two brands that helped kind of shape and change the, the overall look of cards for sure. Um. <laughs> Dan and Clay, a market like this does not necessarily help a smaller retailer. No, like I was saying, it, it actually has been, you know, not not easy for us to find clientele that can pay the higher prices. <clears throat> All right. Michael M. Let's pause for a moment. See what you got in your 19 Bowman Chrome HTA. Sesento, that's usually what I've been telling people for a long time. And, I, you know, uh, as a collector, you know, c keep cards that might be have uh, more significance to your collection than just money. Like for me, I collect Ricky Henderson stuff. And it's easier to keep because this stuff's not incredibly high. Um, you know, if you collect Mike Trout as, as your PC collection, it's going to be tough. <laughs> a little bit tougher, to be honest, you know. Sell the cards that you might be able to, if you if you need money, sell, sell some cards to get some money that don't matter to you for sure. And only keep what maybe is uh, nostalgic to you or what you like for a personal reason or whatever. All right, first card for Michael M. is going to be Durbin Feltman. Durbin. Durbin Feltman on card Chrome Auto. Next. We're looking at. How about Keston Hura on card rookie refractor auto at a $4.99. Good young player there. Cool autograph. Nice looking card. And it looks like you got some, maybe some uh, atomic refractor action here. Quinton Torres Costa. Green atomic out of 99. Another brewer. Bubble Pug would have loved that pack. Bubble Pug, you know anything about this young man here? Have you heard his name thrown around in the uh, Brewers organization or anybody Brewer fans? Because that's a beautiful card. I would love it, uh, for this guy to come out and do well, just for Michael M. But there you go. Some nice looking cards there. Not a terrible pack. Hope you're into it. Thanks, Michael. Two spots. 
spots left in definitive. Two spots left in tops definitive. Nice. Come on. Here we go. Richard Martinez jumping on one of these new uh, New York Dynasty autograph balls. Actually, two of them. So anyone who's curious about uh, what these are about, check out the box. TriStar Hidden Treasures New York Dynasty Autograph Baseballs. One autograph baseball of a current or former New York pinstripe player in every box. Find the ultimate grand treasure, multi-signed New York greats autograph baseball. Joe DiMaggio, Roger Maris, Bill Dickey, Whitey Ford, Lefty Gomez, and more. 25 signatures in all. I guess balls like that are the big hits in a product like this. They call it the grand or the ultimate grand treasure. Look for the one of one baseballs up in the corner, it says. I don't know what one of one baseballs are. I guess they're one of one. Oh, and CJ's telling me he thinks the baseballs are all numbered to like 60 or less. It says in the grade. It says somewhere up here? That grade, I think, right there. Somewhere over there. Here we go. All baseballs feature a product exclusive hologram numbered to 48 or less. Okay. Well, let's check it out. Liam, I trust that I just answered your question. The last five minutes of explaining this box. Ooh, it's got a cool silver bag. Silver bag, silver bag. Oh, it's got some like confetti inside. How nice of them. How nice of them to include. This is like a Christmas gift here. You could probably re re gift, reuse this box for a Christmas gift. For your wife, Richard. I'm sure she would love it. Uh, okay, let's open this silver pouch here and see what we got. <laughs> Off the top of my head, that looks like Jim Layritz. <laughs> Soup, you got an answer? Shop just dropped a full thesis paper on this product. You know? I've thought about putting out a video, just a, you know, a little whatever. How long do we talk about that? 10, 15 minutes? Just a 10, 15 minutes of doing exactly that because there's so many people that are clueless. And unfortunately, Tops and Panini and Upper Deck don't take the responsibility for themselves to educate the public. They just say, oh, by the way, our product's now going for $1,200 this year as opposed to last year when it was only 300 and they don't educate the people as to why. And so people, you know, if you've noticed when Tops and Panini especially post anything on their social media, they get shit on. <laughs> Pardon my French. But man, you should see the comments from people. They're mostly negative. It's too bad. So am I right on Layritz? Let's see. Yes, I am. Yankees, 90 to 96, 99 to, 1, to 2000. Championship teams, 96, 99, 99, and 2000, played in three World Series, hit a dramatic home run in the eighth inning of Game 2 of the 96 World Series to tie the score, and the Yankees go on to win the World Series. Jim Leyritz, formidable force with the pinstripes in 96, it sounds like. There you go. By the way, Richard texted me his... Uh, <laughs> Richard, I'm going to show a couple of those photos of the inside of your jerseys. Richard texted me a photo of all of his jerseys hanging up. You guys got to see this. And by my count, Richard, I counted all the names on your list that you sent me. I counted 66 different jerseys, man. But look at these photos. Literally, Richard's uh, back, back garage, his man cave, looks like a dry cleaner. That's only one photo. Here's the second one he sent me. <laughs> 66 jerseys for Richard Martinez, all different sizes and shapes and colors and names. And then he sent me a picture of some of his balls. Significantly less balls in the collection, but he's adding a couple more today. But yeah, it's great. Let's check out which ball you're going to add here. Defi 
One spot left in definitive, I'm told. Let me adjust this real quick. Who's going to get it? No, you're never going to get it. Not this time. All right. Anything else in the lineup after this? Anybody want to get in the lineup after this? I would love to do some more ripping on a Friday. These pouches are weird. It's like a, it's like a cheap nineteen uh, sixties spaceman uniform. Right, let's see who we got here. What do you got? Somebody take a guess. A Yankee or a former Yankee? Current or former Yankee? That is not one I recognize immediately. I'm gonna say Jim. Somebody. I don't immediately recognize that. So Sento says he sent tops almost fourteen hundred dollars in raw soccer cards. I pulled for replacement, and they sent me back fifty in value. And that's the that's the, you know that's another obviously another issue that someone should address about stuff like that. You know that's a big problem when cards come out damaged or stuff, and especially with the market being as high as it is, people are going to be, you know, when products are 10 times more valuable, they're going to be 10 times more pissed when their cards come out beat up, you know? And then uh, Tops and Panini and Upper Deck, as far as I know, they don't consider the current value of the cards that are being sent back to them. They don't. Phil Nevin says Soup. Brandon says Luis Severino. The answer is... Chris Chambliss could never have told you that. Don't even know who he is. Let's find out. 1971 American League Rookie of the Year. 1976 All-Star. 1978 Gold Glove Award winner. Two-time world champion. I probably should know Chris Chambliss. On October 14th, 76, he hit one of the most memorable home runs in baseball history with his ninth inning walk-off home run to win the American League Championship Series. During that series... He tied or set, and that's it. <laughs> he tied or set. He tied or set. There's no period. There's, there's no right. period. There's no uh, continuation to that sentence. It's just, uh, that's funny. That makes me laugh. But, hey, if you like Yankees, that product for Yankee, for Yankee fans is uh, <clears throat> pretty cool. Obviously guaranteed to get Yankees. And we should probably know Chris Chambliss. He sounds like he uh, has some pretty cool feats. And all week, uh, today and tomorrow, we'll be offering the uh, $20 off code for that product. Definitive sold out. Definitive sold out. Um, let's put up another one. Maybe we can run another one tomorrow and we can start selling it tonight. So how's that sound? Are you able to do that? All right, we're going to put up a new uh, new definitive break. Uh, for anyone else that might have missed out, I will try to run it again. I'm telling you, that's the best price in the country on that product. Thanks to Dan, Joanne, Richard, and Steven, who made this one happen. They each bought two spots. Good moves. It's good on you. So we're going to do another one. Another one, and if anyone else wants to jump in, or maybe if it runs tonight, it runs tonight, the second one, or maybe it'll run tomorrow. But at 200 bucks a spot, it's literally, it gets you at $1,600 a box, folks. So, like I said, someone someone's going to figure it out and probably swoop in and buy all eight spots. And, hey, that's fine. We're willing to let a couple boxes go at that low price. But let's have some fun with this one. Here's the box we're going to use for this break. Give me a couple minutes here to uh, set up the randomizer. Was there a spreadsheet you had going for that? No. Okay. 
Uh, as, are these stickers in the order that they came in, I'm guessing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and as usual, uh, if there's any bonuses, we'll random it off at the end, right? That's how we usually do it. If there's any bonus cards or whatever, we usually do it random. You guys usually, you guys should remember. I think most of these people should remember how we do stuff. You know, we'll do random numbers, right? Top to bottom. So number one gets card, top card, and blah blah. blah. If there happens to be a ninth card at the bottom of the stack, we'll randomize it off, and everyone will get a chance at that. I haven't watched any breaks on this yet. I've been a little out of the loop, so I'm, I apologize if I'm not fully uh, researched on this product here, but it shouldn't be too bad. Dan, Joanne, Richard, Steven are all pretty cool. <coughs> uh, yeah. All right. You guys with me? Dan, Joanne, Richard, and Steven. Let's do some randomizing. Follow me. Pablo Bo Batty. Just join us. Good to see you. What's up, Polly? I hear your wife's doing some work for us now. We're trying to rope in anybody we can to help us out at the shop. So if anybody is responsible that wants a nice job that pays decently, hit us up. Because we're, we're in a rock and a hard place right now. All right, to the randomizer screen. There's the names. You each bought two spots. Thanks again. We're going to randomize that. Let's roll the dice to find out. Hopefully it's a good randomizer roll. Come on. Give me a good number. Ten. All right, ten times. We're going to have a healthy randomizer. And we'll see where y'all end up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's a tenth and final roll. There it is. Copy and paste that. All right, Joanne gets the top card, followed by Dan, Dan, then Richard, Joanne, Stephen, Richard, Stephen will get card number eight. Anything after that will get randomized. Wonderful, let's get into it. 2021 Tops Definitive. We got a second break available right now. Is it up yet? Yeah, but I don't think for the top code, you might have to switch. Oh, yes. Um, you don't have the abil ability to do that? No. Uh, okay. Let me see. Real quick, folks, hold on. Let me make this available somehow. I think I can do it from my phone. It's the discount code. Okay. Is, is it in the... Yeah, you, pro you have to put it in the free shipping profile, too. Do I have to do that? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Give me a second, folks. So we're... we're like I said, we're completely short-staffed short right now, so... Um, we're all having to do more things at once than we need to, or than we want to. Pardon me for a second. Hold on, and so that was the free shipping profile, discount codes, let me see here. Discount codes, here we go.
cool. That should be good now. All right, so group break number two is up. The discount code should be able to be applied to that to get your $50 off per spot. And it should be coming with the free shipping uh, profile as well. So thank you for my, uh, your patience. Good luck all. Here's uh, 2021 Tops Definitive. It really is one of their nicer products they put out. Something thick on the bottom. Let's see how many cards we have. One, two, three, four. There is a redemption. Five, six, seven, eight. So yes, it looks like there's only eight here. This is the appropriate one. And the one on the bottom is a thicky. Steven could be excited about that. All right. Top card underneath the cover. Going to Joanne. How about a four out of five, Barry Larkin? Very nice. Very nice. Let me see if I can adjust my... And if you missed out on this definitive break, we have the second one up right now. 200 bucks a spot, folks. That gets you at 1600 bucks a box. These boxes are selling for two grand, folks. Are you hearing me? I hope you're hearing me. That's a nice hit for you, Joanne. I hope you like it. I like it. He's got a great sig. You want to check out the back? There's the back. Not much to the back of these. I'm going to put your sticker right there. That's going to you. Sweet, she says. I agree. Want to use this for something? Probably. All right, second card going to Dan. Two and three going to Dan. Dan, if you're watching, first one is uh, Sam Huff on card rookie. Looks like a green parallel. I'm guessing it's numbered, there it is, 14 of 25, Texas Rangers. Sam Huff. <clears throat> Let me grab a sticker for Danny. And you also get the next card, Dan. Pretty little numbers so far. Next card is yours, too. It's going to be, looks like another green. Ooh, how about Pete Alonzo? Ooh, nice. A little jumbo pinstripe relic on card auto, 8 out of 25. CJ likes it. I like it, too. Polar Bear. Did he do anything in game one? You know, have we heard? I haven't heard anything about him. I haven't heard nothing about the match yet. I like Pete Alonzo. So a couple of green parallels for Dan N. Back to back. Thanks, Dan. Good to have you, as usual. Uh, Richard gets card number four. Donnie Baseball. It's going to go with his New York Baseballs he just bought today. A little lumber, a little on-card SIG, 11 out of 50. Thank you, Dan. I gotcha. Right on. Next is going to be Joanne again with the fifth card, which is the Redemption, Joanne. Let's see if I can hear. I'm going to use a little decoy. There we go. Okay. Joanne's Redemption in the five spot. Do it like this. I've seen some sick Redemptions. Dual Auto Relic. Purple parallel. Who do you want it to be? Joanne wants it to be some Dodgers. Let's see who it is. Royals. Whit Merrifield and Alex Gordon. It's the wrong blue and white for Joanne and I and CJ. 
But hey, getting a dual auto relic purple parallel is great. You know, if you're not into keeping it, you can move that to a Royals, trade it to a Royals fan for something Dodgers cool, you know. Not terrible. Not terrible. It's good trade bait, Joanne. Don't worry. Next, we got Steven back with the six card. Steven, you're looking at purple. Aaron Judge, four out of five. I feel like Steven's going to have a good time here today. More New York. Purple Judge, four out of five. That's a cool card. Heck yeah. So the redemption should be out of five. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I would. CJ points out to uh, Joanne that perhaps uh, because this purple is out of five, perhaps your redemption purple is out of five. Nice card, Stephen S. Richard getting the uh, second to last card. Chris Paddock, one of one jumbo nameplate. Richard Martinez gets the Chris Paddock, one of one jumbo letter. <clears throat> I love the brown and yellow of the Padres colors. Nice letter, indeed. All right, the final card, as you can see, is a thicky. Allen Thick. Allen Thick right here. Look at that thing. What's it going to be? Like some cleats or something? Maybe a bat knob? Well, I think it's, um, I've seen some where the cleats, the metal spike. Like maybe a spike, maybe, maybe a bat knob. Let's see what's up. It's going to Steven. Steven, let's see what it is. I'm excited to check it out. Hopefully it's cool. Here we go. Sean Murphy. Protectors at the plate. 7 out of 10. Uh, that's going to be some uh, helmet or chest or knee protector. Definitely some acrylic. Some beat up acrylic right there. Congratulations, you've received a Protectors of the Plate Relic from 21 Tops Definitive. Sean Murphy, Murphy, Oakland Athletics catcher. Let's see that love connection, says Soup. This is a great, this is a good box. I think there's better boxes in the shop here, folks. Uh, if anybody wants to run that back tonight, we got eight more spots. We got, oh, seven more spots. Let me uh, switch that around. Got to get a big, thick protector for that clubhouse. That's definitive, folks. That is definitive. I find it very enjoyable to be able to do breaks like that. I wish we could do a lot more of that. Thanks to everybody who made that happen. Very cool. Charge up here with the mightiest of touches. Yes. The mightiest. Like Midas touch, right? M-I-D-A-S. Mightiest. Play on words. So, yeah, there we go. Top's definitive is looking good. If anybody wants to do that again, we can run that back for a group break. I think that's a very affordable group break considering where the market's at on those full boxes. Um, we could do that again tonight. We still got, we can still hang around here for another couple hours. Who wants to get anything ripped? We'd like to do something else. I'd like to see someone use that code on encased football, 75 bucks off. How about some more prism basketball packs? Where's our basketball collectors or any more of those New York Yankees balls? <clears throat> Thank you, Richard. 
Yeah, Soup's saying Shin Guard from that last card. Yes, that was a Shin Guard, I believe. Anybody else interested in getting something ripped here? What'd you say? Seven spots left on the second break, CJ? Seven. Seven. Let me make a uh, note of that here. Seven spots left in the next definitive break. Who uh, started that one off? Corbin R. Corbin R started us off on the second definitive break. So who wants to back up Corbin R? If there's anybody listening that might want another crack at some more definitive. Anybody listening that might feel like their luck is running high right now and wants to just keep it riding, get some more spots on this definitive, let's do another one before the night's over. Why not? Don't leave Corbin R hanging. Well, he doesn't want to wait till tomorrow, and neither do I. Really, I want to see another one done this evening. <clears throat> we can do some more uh, trivia just for S's and G's. Hmm. Hmm. There's some interesting trivia questions out there. Here's a pitching question. It's kind of a deep pitching question. This is just for fun because we're sitting around doing nothing here. Who threw the first no hitter in Marlins history? Marlins franchise history. Who threw the first no-hitter in Marlins franchise history? It's kind of random, but it's a name I recognize. In fact, hold on. No. It wasn't one of the autographs we pulled earlier. Who were the two Yankees autographs we just pulled? It wasn't Shameless. Who was the other guy? Was that Layritz? Uh, it wasn't him. Josh Beckett, good guess, but no soup. It's a Marlins question, so there's probably going to be two. Hey, Tim M. popping in for the first time today. I haven't seen Tim in three weeks probably since I've been gone. but And he's right. Al Leiter, May 11th of 96 versus Colorado through the first no-hitter in Marlins franchise history. What's up, Tim A.? Does that $75 off in case football tempt you in any way, Tim? Here's another trivia question. Here's it. 11 to 0, says Tim, was the score, I'm guessing. Here's another pitcher question. Clayton Kershaw, who recently turned 33 years old, won his most recent National League Cy Young Award in 2014. Who was the American League Cy Young Award winner that year? 2014. American League Cy Young Award winner. Anybody know off the top of their head? No. No. You're close. <laughs> Seven spots left in our top's definitive group break. Don't forget... Look on the right-hand side of our screen. Don't forget, if you're jumping into that group break, don't forget to use the code to get your $50 off per spot. That is what's going to be worth it. No, it's not Lincecum. 
soup. It does end in ER, CJ. That's what I was saying. You were close. His last name ends with ER. CJ suggested Verlander. He suggested Scherzer back to back. I said no. There you go, Richard. Kluber. It's the correct answer. Corey Kluber, 2014, American League Cy Young. Here's a good question. Amer American League, yeah. <laughs> Dave Parker wore number 39 for six teams in his 19-year career. Who is the only player in baseball for whom number 39 is retired? How's the White Mamba auto raffle going? Not sure what that means. Oh, is that the uh, auto card we have? Yeah. <laughs> Christian P. Yeah, jump into some uh, basketball product, and you'll get uh, you'll get on the uh, player of the day winners list. I'll give you a hint on that last question. He was a Dodger. He's a Dodger Hall of Famer who wore number 39. Who? No. And I did a, I did a, a report on this player in third grade. <laughs> it was a small, it was a short report, and we had to make, I had, I had to make a little... I uh, tried to make a uh, an old baseball that like kind of how was the style of baseballs back in the day. It's not Sutton Corbin, no. Oh, Tim got it. Tim got it already. Campanella, there you are, buddy. Sorry, I missed that. Roy Campanella, number 39. Pardon me. Yep, sorry, Tim. <clears throat> well, what's happened? What's happening here? Six spots left. Six spots left in the same Six spots left in definitive. The next definitive. Boom. I got a redemption, Tatis from Topps Dynasty. When did we pull that for you? And how long did it take to get that card? I'm sure it's sick.
I don't have a pick and my guitar is out of tune, but I'm going to sing the blues for a minute. Will somebody buy something and jump in so I don't sit here like an idiot all day? Hello there, my old friend. Not so long ago, it was till the end. We played outside in the pouring rain. On our way up the road, we started over again. Living the dream of you on top My mind is aching, Lord, it won't stop That's how it happened, living life by the drop Up and down that road in our own our shoes Talking about the good things and singing the blues when your way and I stayed behind But we both knew it was just a matter of time Living the dream of you on top My mind is aching, Lord, it won't stop That's how it happens, living life by the drop time we're alive today churning up the past there's no easier way time between us means to an end god it's good to be here walking together my friend living the dreams of you on top my mind is aching lord it won't stop that's how it happens, living life by the drop. Yeah. That's how it happens, living life by the drop. Come on. That's how it happens, living life by the drop. Little Stevie Ray Vaughan taking us to a short break. Be right back when there's some more stuff to do. Five spots left in the next definitive break. Boom. And we might have a little something coming through to rip here. Anybody want to rip like a, a box of Heritage or something that maybe just takes a few extra minutes? I don't mind doing that. I haven't ripped any Donruss. I can't believe Donruss baseball is $200 a box, folks. I cannot even believe what's happening. <laughs> Donruss, $200 a box. It's wild. Why old? All right, who do we got here? Paul H. Jumping on some New York Dynasty. Thank you, Paul. All right, we opened up a couple of these earlier. We saw Jim Layritz and Chris Shameless. Comes in this nice space age pouch. It also comes with not only a baseball, but some uh, freeze dried uh, Neapolitan ice cream inside as well. What do you guys think this is? Looks like a Paul. 
but it's not like an O'Neill. I don't recognize that. Yankees fans, where are you at on the autographs here? I don't think it's going this way, no. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Well, you got a guess? Uh, I recognize it now that I, I saw the name. Somebody, I feel like somebody could get this. Nobody? I kind of want to say Vito Blue. No. I like where you kind of the like guess is. Like Andrew Jones, but I don't think he was a Yankee. No, it's definitely a B on the, it's BB or the initials. I don't know if the, nobody's guessing or if the chat's just behind right now, but here we go. Aaron Boone. I thought it was oh, Bob Boone. <laughs> it's Aaron Boone. <laughs> New York Yankees manager, 2003 All-Star, known for his walk-off home run in the 11th inning of Game 7 of the ALCS, prolonging the Red Sox's curse of the Bambino. His Game 7 home run was rated the ninth best home run of all time on baseball tonight. Aaron Boone, 2003 Yankees All-Star manager, and... Uh, Nice game seven home run. That one's for Paul H. Thanks, Paul. Getting something to do on our program here tonight. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. You get the space age sack with it, too. What are you gonna do with that, you think? <laughs> Five spots left in our next definitive break. Four. Oh, excuse me, four spots left. We can do this, folks. Four spots left. Four spots left in definitive. We can do this. We're on the downhill of this hump right now. The downhill of this mountain. Scooby Doo Doo Boo Ba Doo Doo Scooby Doo Boo Ba Doo Ba 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 Doo That's what it happens, baby, light by the drop. Scooby Doo Boo Scooby Doo 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 Scooby Doo Scooby Doo 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 I want to find a trivia question that's not about a... Here we go. Here's a good question. Another trivia question while we're waiting. Here's a good trivia question. Anybody can play. We're just playing for fun. See if you can guess off the top of your head without looking it up. Here's the question. Fernando Tatis Jr. homered off of Sergio Romo... Uh, last, well, a while, this was before March 13th. He recently home, Fernando Tatis Jr. recently homered off of Sergio Romo. Who hit the first home run Romo allowed in the majors in 2008? That's funny. Fernando's You're actually correct. I wonder if anybody heard that. I wonder if anybody heard that. If you heard the answer from the back room, then you can get it. Who hit? Who, who did Sergio Romo give up his first major league home run to in 2008? Anybody out there listening? Have their thinking cap on? Am I ready for the Dodger game? No, I'm not ready. I'm ready to rip some product, though. <clears throat> Yes, both Fart Dad and Bubble Pug are correct. Fernando Tatis Sr., July 10th, 2008. Fart Dad. I don't know if I'd be want to, want to be known as Fart Dad. But remember when Howard Stern came out as Fart Man on like the MTV Music Videos Awards, like in the 90s? <laughs> 
And he had like his butt cheeks hanging out of that spandex suit. Oh man, that was amazing. <laughs> Four spots left in Definitive and plenty plenty of other products we can rip, folks. What's anybody want to do? You want to just sit around and watch me uh, look like an idiot? All right, here's a question just about last season. Who hit the longest home run in the major leagues last season? Bonus points if you know what length it was. Scooby dooby 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 doo doo. Longest home run in the major leagues last season was hit by who? Anybody know? Scooby dooby 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 doo doo. I'm going to be dropping some links in the group chat. No, I'm not. Maybe CJ can drop a couple links. No, not Stanton, not a Rosa Reina, and not Cade McMorph. Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. -doo. CJ's dropping some links. If you're interested in buying, uh, buying into our definitive break, use that code and get $50 off. The code is DEF, short for definitive. If you're interested in uh, encased football personal break, you'll get $75 off if you use the code ENC. We got 2021 Heritage. We got some Gold Rush football mini helmets. And we got no wait, no lineup right now. So if you order something right now, it'll get ripped right now. You can just come and go if you like real quick. And by the way, yes, it was Ronald Acuna Jr. with 495 feet. That <clears throat> was the answer to that last question. Charles Grosso typed it in there. Whether he did it by memory or not, we don't know. Three spots left, Three spots left in definitive. Oh, we are doing this. Uh, we are doing this. It's the best price you're going to get on this product probably all year long, folks. $200 a spot times eight spots is $1,600 a box, folks. And those boxes are selling for two grand right now, retail. I'm waiting for someone to swoop in and literally buy all eight spots at one of these breaks, just because. We just had opening day yesterday. Here's another opening day baseball question. Yes, Corbin R. We're, we're working it. We're trying to work it down. We got three spots left. We're trying to work it down for you, buddy. Here, mean, meanwhile, while you guys are looking at those definitive spots go away at cheaper than they should be, here's another trivia question. Here's an opening day trivia question. I've actually uh, done this question before. What occurred on opening day in 2017 that had never occurred before on opening day? Does anybody happen to know that obscure question? It was only four years ago. What occurred on opening day 2017 that had never happened before on opening day? Bubble Pug says bees, like bees on the field? No, but I like that. Jackie C.A. says triple play. No, but that's a decent guess. 
Corbin R says cycled. No, but you guys are kind of getting there. Good guesses. Cat on the field. No, it's not something like that. It is a feat. It is a, uh, a feat of baseball. I'll give you a hint. This feat was accomplished by starting pitcher Madison Bumgarner. There's your hit. <laughs> no. That was two years ago. <laughs> Corbin R, you're getting close. It was it was Madison Bumgarner who who uh, who completed this feat, a feat that had never been uh, accomplished before on an opening day. Jackie C A must have had to look it up. I'm guessing, but yes. He, Madison Bumgarner hit two home runs, and that's the feat. A pitcher before then had never hit two home runs on an opening day game. Kind of an interesting stat. I like that one. According to this quiz form here, who was inducted? Who was the first player ever inducted into the uh, MLB Hall of Fame? There you go, Jackie CA. If yeah, there you go. Cool. Short trivia question though: Who was the first player inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame? Anybody know the answer to that? Its first ceremony was held in 1936. Other people that were inducted after this name included Babe Ruth, Christy Mathewson, Walter Johnson, Honus Wagner. But, I, but according to this tri trivia question, there was one player whose name was inducted first. Got three spots left in definitive. $200 a spot when you use the discount code. And I'm telling you people, you're not going to see that price anywhere else. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Tell me if you do. Tell me if you do see that price anywhere else. I'd like to know. Justin BL, Ty Cobb is the correct answer according to this. Cobb was inducted into the hall during his first ceremony in 1936. Joined other greats in the names of Honus Wagner, Walter Johnson, Babe Ruth, and Christy Mathewson. Here's a good question. I think I've even said this question before. What's up, breakthrough? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> shop at the helm. Yeah, shops at the helm with nothing to do. So I'm rattling off trivia questions. I would love to be ripping product. <clears throat> Breakthrough odds. You want to get something for me to do? Grab a box of Heritage or something. <clears throat> Here's another trivia question in the meantime. Who was the first... African-American pitcher in MLB history to lead the league in season wins. The first African-American pitcher in MLB history to lead the league in season wins.
have any single random hobby boxes in the back. What do you mean? I'm not sure what that question means. We've got a shit ton of random random boxes in the back. <laughs> uh, so I guess the answer to that question would be yes. Dan DeClay, no, it's not Bob Gibson, but I like where your head's at. No, LeBron James uh, doesn't play baseball and definitely wasn't playing back then. First African-American pitcher in MLB history to lead the league in season wins. J.R. Richards, no. I can give you a hint. I could probably give you the year. That might narrow it down a little bit. The year was 1956, and no, it's not Free Jenkins, but good guess. 1956 was the year, if that helps anybody out. Not Fergie, it's not Gibson, no. It's not Satchel. Not Satchel Page, but that's a good guess. He's actually mentioned in the answer, to be honest, but it's not, not the answer. Some people may have guessed Robinson and Doby. But according to this answer here, it says Robinson and Doby never pitched, and Satchel won only 28 games in his MLB career. Paul Hutchins got it. Don Newcomb went 27-7 and for the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1956. He also won the NL Cy Young Award and MVP. He helped the Dodgers to the World Series, but were defeated by the Yankees four games to three. So according to this, Don Newcomb was the first African-American pitcher in MLB history to lead the league in season wins. Cool question. I like this question. Listen up to this one. We still got three spots left in definitive? Yeah. Three spots left in Top's definitive the next break, folks. Come on, we can do this tonight. We're offering our definitive spots for $200 a spot if you use the code. It says $250 on the price tag, but you use this code DEF at checkout. You get $50 off each spot. $200 a spot. Crazy price. Check out this interesting trivia question. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Justin BL. I'm going to take my sweet-ass time with this. I'm going, to, I'm going to announce this trivia question, and then I'm going to get into your box, and then we'll see if anybody gets the trivia question. Here's the trivia question. Throughout the entire 20th century, only two American League teams went the 100-season distance without ever changing their team name. One team was the Detroit Tigers. Which team was the other? While you guys are thinking about that, let's check out uh, Autograph Baseball. All right. slower. 
slower. <laughs> All right. It's not Yankees and it's not Red Sox. the back side of the baseball. It's a new ball. It's not one of the hidden treasure balls because it doesn't have 25 signatures on it. And there it's numbered. Uh, I should have been looking at the uh, serial numbers. But this one's numbered 23 out of 48. By the way, going back to the trivia, it's not the Reds, the Dodgers, or the Angels. No, we're, we're, Dan, we're looking for a team that has never changed their name, which means they've never changed cities. Does anybody want to, uh, let's see if that'll go in focus. Sc screenshot the QR, if you can, I wonder if, if someone can scan that QR code from their screen. I think you can. Maybe. Probably. I hold it there for a minute. Somebody try to scan it with their phone. See if that comes up. See if you can tell me the name on this ball before I even look at it. I can probably do it. Let me try it. There it is. That's pretty easy. I like that QR code thing. Breakthrough odds got a little something coming. God bless you. Well, Justin, I know the name because I just scanned the QR code. Do you know that? I would not have been able to guess it. I would not have been able to guess the name on this autograph just by looking at the autograph, to be honest. But I do know the name of the player. Maybe I can pull out the card and, and give you a hint. Watch. Watch here. Let me do this. Use this as a little. Here's some stats on this player. 1981 ALCS MVP. Six-time All-Star. Two-time Gold Glove winner. By the way, the answer to the trivia question was Chicago White Sox, people. Chicago White Sox. Back to the baseball here. Six-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glove, 76 home run champ, five World Series, two-time champion. Holds the AL record for most home runs by a third baseman. Paul Hutchins. I don't know if you scanned the QR or if you just know what's happening, but you're right, buddy. Greg Nettles. Uh, whenever I hear his name, I always think of, uh, you know those plants? I don't know if it's the technical name of that plant, but it's the one that stings. They're called stinging nettles. I don't know if that's the technical name, but that's what we used to call them. It always reminds me of a story. Back when I was in the scouts, and I was running from something or somebody. We were messing around, you know, and I tried to cut through a field of bushes, and it was a field of stinging nettles that were taller than me at the time because I was 12 probably. And I got all just all that stuff all up in me. Greg Nettles for you, Justin. Sweet Auto wouldn't have guessed that at all either. Yeah. There's another one for your New York collection. What's up in the group chat? Still have three spots left? Three spots left in definitive, folks. Who wants it? Let me see, Bob Euchre. I like Brendan Aenas with Bob Euchre. That's a good guy. That's Chris B. Shop, welcome back. We miss you dearly. You're the breaking, ripping king. Eric was not up to par. Eric was not up to par, LOL, JK. I am Eric. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm Card Shop Eric. Maybe you're talking about Matt or Brandon or somebody else who was filling in for me. 
I know. Hey, no, there's, no, there's only one card shop, Eric, in the world, folks, and, and you guys got him right here. Chris T. All right. Chris T. Taking my time. I'll take my time on this 2020 Bowman Chrome HTA. Yeah, Matt's been filling in for me. Yeah. Matt, Brandon, Steve, I think, was filling in a couple times. Chris T. Let's just take a look at the outside of the box. We're going to milk this for all it's worth. Three autograph cards. Once again, Tops does not in any manner make any representations as to whether its cards will attain any future value. Justin, you may come by. Yes, we'll be open from 10 to 4 tomorrow. You don't have to ask. You can come by whenever we're open, man. We're open every day except Sunday, for those of you that don't know. Chris T. No relation to ice, as far as I know. All right, top card. Oh, you got a little bonus box. You got one of those paper autographs in here on the top. Anthony Volpe. Nice. It's like the paper glossy autograph card out of 199. I believe that's a bo bonus. I believe you have, yeah, you still have three Bowman Chrome autographs in there. Anthony Volpe, I th think he's with the Yankee organization? A lot of Yankees. They just swoop up on everybody they can. One of my favorite players, 70s Yanks were my childhood. There you go. So that's nice. Starting off with a with a bonus party bonus. I'm actually going to put these right back in here. Like so. Let's move on. Move on. Next card. Speaking of Yankees, Antonio Cabello. First Bowman Chrome autograph. So two Yankee uh, 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 two Yankee prospects and good. Chris PC's Volpe, so that's perfect. Awesome. Love it when a plan comes together. So there's two Yankees. Are you a Yankee fan, Chris? Maybe you're happy about Cabello too then. Actually, I don't know why I'm sleeving that, because I'm just trying to put it right back into that little plastic box for you. Next, we've got... Gilberto Jimenez. Red Sox prospect. His autograph looks like it says GU7, or maybe G-7. G7, let's call him G7 from now on, shall we? Like Battleship. You sank my Jimenez. Actually a Braves fan, he says. All right, again, I sleeved it. I'm just so used to sleeving it. I'm trying to do something different here. I'm trying something different. Well, let's see what the final card is. Is it a Brave or better? No, I don't think it is. I actually don't. I haven't even seen the top of the helmet yet. But judging by the top of that helmet, for some reason, I'm thinking Diamondbacks. I hope not. But yes, I've seen that helmet before. Or maybe I haven't. Wildered Patino. How did I know that was a D-backs helmet? I don't know. That's pretty crazy. Wildered. As in, like, bewildered. Bewildered here. Is 
CJ is executing some launch codes in the back right now. There's the 2020 Bowman Chrome HTA. You got a PC card, which is cool. All right, thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Who else is up in the lineup? It's 555. Let's get these last three definitive spots sold. Is anybody? Anybody? Let's see if we can do some nudging here. Let's see if we can do some nudging. So card shop, Matt. I, I sent him home today. He was telling me about how he hasn't he hasn't been able to kind of be at home. He's been putting in some a lot of hours at the shop and blah blah. I was like, why don't you just get the heck out of here? Go home, spend a few extra hours with your family. And he texted me this photo. Here's Matty. Here's card shop Matty and his kid right there. And he said, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so that's what he's doing, hanging out with that happy little animal. <laughs> It's a good photo. What was I just gonna look up? Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna maybe go to go to the old Twitter thing and tell people there's only three spots left. Scooby dooby 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 doo doo. Funny story about Volpe, says, says Chris. I sold a first chrome to someone named Anthony Volpe in New York on eBay. After messaging back and forth, I found out it was his grandfather who bought the card. <laughs> That's cool. So Volpe's grandfather bought one of his grandson's autograph cards off of you. That's cool. <clears throat> We had a few months back or so, we had, uh, you know, Jake Rogers, Detroit Tiger, Tigers catcher. We had him uh, seen one of our posts, or it was a, we had pulled a one of one Jake Rogers tools of the trade autograph from Panini Absolute Baseball last year. And he saw it somewhere and he messaged us and says, hey man, how can I get a hold of that? It's a dope card. And the card had ended up going to. I forget the gentleman's name, but it went to one of the collectors that we were able to get in touch with, and and the collector sent the card back to us. We sent it to Jake, and Jake sent uh, him a uh, autographed baseball, which was cool. Every now and then, the player, you know, some of the players, especially the younger guys, you know, they get excited about seeing their stuff, their 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 signatures come out and and whatnot. You know, a lot of the guys enjoy it. What's up, Jimmy Beaver? <clears throat> 3.50 for 
three spots left in that final definitive break, folks. Three spots left. If you're on Twitter, go ahead and tweet that. We just, I just put it up there saying there's three spots left, 200 a spot. Use the code DEF at checkout ripping now. So if you, if you can retweet it or something for us, that'd be cool. If you, if you don't follow us on Twitter yet, please do that. Twitter at HOF Baseball Card. We should probably put our handles up on the screen somewhere. Scooby dooby 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 dooby. Scooby dooby Well, what's up, folks? What are we doing? Know this song, Sonny knows it. What's up? Sing it with me, buddy. Shed a tear cause I'm missing you. Still a right to smile. Girl, I think about you every day now. Was a time when I wasn't sure, but you set my mind at ease. There's no doubt you're in my heart now Said woman, take it slow It'll work itself out fine All we need is just a little patience Said sugar, make it slow It'll come Tweeting, Chris B. Times I get so tense, but I can't speed up the time. You know, love, there's one more thing to consider. Said woman, take it slow. Things will be just fine. Said sugar, take the test. 
time the lights are shining bright You and I have got what it takes to make it We won't fake it I'll never break it Cause I can't take it for it. That's an epic track. Guns and Roses. One word title for that song, simply Patience. Hey, and that gave uh, Nick C a little bit of time to maybe jump on something. Nick, Nick C. Nick C Hustle. Still three spots left in Definitive? People, who's going to jump on those last three, three spots? We got less than an hour in the program tonight. I think we can do it. Survivor. What do you want to hear by Survivor, Sonny? Sing Survivor? Is that the name of a... You mean the band Survivor? Like Eye of the Tiger or something? <laughs> I don't know what you mean by Survivor.
the tiger. My voice is a little bit shot. Free bird. Free bird. Nick C. Let's see what lies beneath the wrapper of 2021 Tops Inception for you. Looking like it's going to just be an autograph, not a relic of any sort. You got Lindor on the front. Trevor Bauer. Jose Barrios. Garrett Cole, maybe a bonus? No, no bonus. Getting ahead of myself. I was hoping, I was hopeful. It's Luis Garcia, rookie out of 150. It's a dope looking card. Color looks good, the image looks cool. Got Ryan Mountcastle, rookie there. And the autograph is Evan White, rookie, on card autograph, seventy six out of one twenty five. Evan White, Seattle Mariners. Nick C, thanks for jumping in, giving me something to do besides sing songs and do trivia. Anybody else care to jump on one of the spots at Definitive? We're so close. I know we can get that done. <laughs> Nick says, that's depressing. I didn't want to be the one to say it, buddy, so I'm glad you said it first. But yes, it wasn't the best box of Inception I've ever seen. Well, what's happening, folks? Who wants to get ripped? Who else? Who else wants to get ripped? Let's do some heritage. Let's do some definitive. Come on. Who wants to jump on that encased football? 75 off. Prism packs. With $30 off, you get prism basketball packs for $200 a pop. To step away for a moment and if anyone decides they want something ripped we'll be back excuse me for a moment folks
Hey, I'm happy to announce there are two spots left in the, def the second definitive group break. Thanks to George M., who I heard was lingering around somewhere in the background and may have picked up a spot. So thanks to that, thanks to George, we got two spots left. One spot. One spot left, I'm guessing. Did you just grab one? No, oh, someone else did. Now we got one spot left, thanks to someone else. All right, one spot left, folks. Use that discount code, you get that spot for 200 bucks. That's probably the best price on the internet. Meantime, we're going to rip some uh, another Yankees autograph ball for Joel. Joel L. coming at you with a Yankees ball. Taking my time. Let's actually look at some of the names on the side of this box here. Potential names. Find your favorite Bronx players who debuted in New York prior to 1990. Like George Steinbrenner. <laughs> I don't know if he's anybody's favorite New York Bronx player, but Steinbrenner, Billy Martin, Don Larson, Bill Dickey. Look for your favorite Bronx players who do, do uh, 1990 to the present, like Jeter, Mariano, Aaron Judge, Kluber. What else is on here? Look for the randomly inserted Dynasty Treasure Ticket. Redeemable for authenticated New York baseball memorabilia. Look for the rare Joe DiMaggio autographed helmet. Some interesting stuff. You could potentially find the Diamond Treasure. How about a Mickey Mantle autographed baseball? The Diamond Treasure. This is like if a slot machine had a baseball product, I feel like. Uh... <laughs> Joel L., please let that definitive spot be a hit, he says. Aaron must have bought one. Aaron N. George M., welcome back shop. Lingering in the back, lingering in and out, but that's the best price definitely for definitive. Absolutely. What's up, George? How's the brewing going? Got anything uh, coming up on tap that's hot or cold, as it were? Joel L. here, some jumping on a little Yankees autograph baseball. Let's all pull it out and guess who it is. Who do we think? Last out in the 96 World Series, Charlie somebody. I don't really recognize that last name. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody have an idea? Here's some hints. <clears throat> he played with a ton of teams. Giants, Phillies, Yankees, Rockies, Phillies, Pirates, Yankees, Giants, and Brewers. From 88 to 99 or so, I guess it looks like. George Mir, you got it. Charlie Hayes, apparently who made the last out in the 96 World Series. Bow, 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 bow. Hey, Hall of Fame, I found you guys when you used to post product reviews on Reddit. That was a long time ago. I was trying to use Reddit for a little bit. 
but the people on Reddit ended up being like worse than the people on Twitter, so I stopped using Reddit. Because there was just no love. But never mind that. Fart Dad, whoever you are, thanks for finding us, man. We'd love to rip something for you if you're in the market. George M says, first homebrew of the year is on tap and currently tasting spot on. I bet it is, buddy. I bet it is. Well, you know how I roll, man. Whenever you feel like bringing something up. We'll crack something together. Thanks, Joel, for that rip. Uh, looks like Nico jumped on a prism pack. At the correct price of two twenty nine. Hopefully, Nico used his discount and got an additional thirty bucks off, so he got a two hundred dollar pack here. Nico, good luck, man. Hope you're doing well. Sold out. Sick. Definitive spots left. Zero. Boom. And we might set up another one of those for tomorrow. Yes, George. Please bring a growler by. All right, Nico, let's see what we got here. We got Ricky Rubio on the front. Baja Grill. Tyrell Terry. Rookie. Jaron Jackson Jr. Who would you say were the, were the uh, wild card guys besides Ja? Ja, Edwards, and Gordon. We're looking for Ja, Edwards, and Gordon to qualify for the player of the day. Tomas Sadaransky. We've got Patrick Beverly. Terrence Davis. You got some red up in here somewhere. We'll put those here. James Harden. Malik Monk. Bojan Bogdanovich and Brooke Lopez. So I didn't see any of the wild card guys yet for the player of the day promotion. Behind Terrence Davis, you got this guy, Alexei Pogusevsky. Pogusevsky? Let's check out this red wave behind him. Red Wave, we're looking at Thomas Bryant. Washington Wizards, Thomas Bryant, no relation to Kobe. Or Dez, as far as I know. Not numbered, that I can see, but it is Red Wave. It's definitely a nice looking card. Thomas Bryant, CJ, what do you think? Come here. He's all right. He's not great, but he's not bad. Not thrilling, but nice. Well, there you go. Nico, a few cards coming your way. And hey, we sold out definitive, folks. We sold out definitive. So here's our second definitive break of the day. Thanks to Corbin, Joanne, Tim, Dan, Paul, George, Aaron, and Dan. Dan, the only person with two spots. Hopefully it pays off for you. Let me uh, give you a minute to set up the randomizer and we will do this break. And after we're done with Definitive, if there's nothing else on the table, we're going to call it a night, folks. Because I've done enough hanging around doing nothing tonight. <clears throat> so give me a moment to set up for the randomizer here. So do a, do a last call or something, CJ. Let people know that we got about maybe, you know, whatever. 10 minutes left in the program. 10 minutes left to get orders in for the night, folks. If there's nothing on the table, by the time we're done with Definitive, we're out of here. 
I'd love to rip more. I'll rip all night long if stuff's on the table. folks participants in the uh, definitive break number two follow me to the randomizer screen random cards whatever number you come up with you get matched up with is going to be the card number you get one through eight top to bottom as usual any bonus cards nine through F whatever will be randomly uh, assigned to a participant let us roll the dice to see how many times we're going to randomize this list. Eight. Double fours. Eight times. Here we go, folks. Justin BL's hoping for a cut signature. He's not even in the break. He just wants to see a cut signature. Three rolls. Four rolls. Five. Six. Seven. And eighth and final roll. Boom, there's the order. Copy and paste that. Actually, let me make a new, just in case we need it. Mm -hmm. They are pasted, this will be DEF CON 2. All right, there you see it. Pasted from the randomizer screen, George gets the top card, followed by Aaron, Dan, Corbin, Tim, Joanne, Dan gets seven, and Paul H. gets eight. There's a pretty neat card in the eight spot on the last box. Let's see what happens with this box. Let's get into it, folks. Thanks, Chris B., for a little uh, love in the group chat, encouraging people to jump in. Yeah. We're the longest-running family-owned brick-and-mortar in the world, folks. 40 years strong. As far as we know, there's not a single other business, single other uh, fam brick and mortar that's been running longer than 40 years and is still running. So thanks, Chris B., for the shout-out there. Thanks uh, in advance to anyone who's continuing or choosing to support us. Let's count the cards. One, two, three, four, another redemption, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like there's a proper, the exact amount they're supposed to be. All right, George, you get the top card, buddy. Let's see who it is. It's Raphael Devers, 34 out of 50. Raphael Devers, 34 out of 50, the best in Red Sox. For George M. Sticker on there for George. Thanks again, George. Good to see you. Come on by with that growler, man. Uh, card number two, Aaron N. Aaron N. Card number two looks like green. It's going to be Bobby Dalbeck on card rookie autograph. CJ says he's a good player. So that's two cards for Boston. If this was a team break, it would have been great for the Red Sox. And that's number 23 out of 25. That's Aaron. 
Sticker on the penny sleeve. Next, third card, Dan. His first of his two spots he purchased. Third card down, you're going to get Big Poppy. David Ortiz, 10-time MLB All-Star, 541 career home runs, on-card autograph, 12 out of 30. That's three in a row for Boston. Good God. It's a Boston box. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, George. This was Dan. Sticker for Dan. Next card going to Corbin. Here you go, Corbin. Card four is a redemption. I'm going to get out my uh, decoy again so I can slow play the redemption just for S's and G's. All right, let's see what this redemption has to say for Corbin R. The last redemption in the last box was for a dual autographed patch, I believe. I think it was a dual auto relic purple Royals. This one, you have a framed autograph of <laughs> Cody Bellinger. Ooh, sick. Definitely sick. This is definitely not a Red Sox box anymore. Cody Bellinger, framed auto for Corbin. You know we love that here in Los Angeles. Nasty. There's your sticker on it. Cody Bellinger, framed autograph for Corbin R right now out of our second box of Definitive. And after we're done, we only got four more, five more, whatever, four more cards to reveal. And then unless there's, some, unless there's something popping up onto the table for us to open, we're going to get out of here, folks. So anybody who's watching who maybe wants us to rip something, get those orders in right now. Otherwise, we're probably going to split because we've been doing a lot of waiting around tonight. Up next, Tim with card five. Casey Mize, Jumbo Relic, on-card autograph rookie, 4 out of 30. Just a little Jumbo black swatch there. Tim grabbing Casey Mize there. Carter Button says he just bought a hobby box. Cool. Make sure it's a personal break box if you want it to be ripped for you. All right. That's Tim right there. Next is Joanne with the third card from the bottom. It's Mr. Carwash, Jose Canseco, on card autographed, bat relic card, 14 out of 50. Mr. Carwash, yeah. I feel like Joanne's gotten some Jose Canseco autographs previously. There you go, Joanne, Mr. Canseco coming your way. Nice looking card. Pretty decent, clean autograph. Two cards left. Second to last card belongs to Dan. All right, Dan, here's your uh, second card of your uh, two uh, spots you bought. Kevin Biggio, MLB Authenticated Relic. 25 out of 50. We didn't see any of those relics in the last box. The only relic was that Super Jumbo Catcher's Relic, huh? Everything else had an autograph on it. Yeah, that's the first base relic we've seen in two boxes. And I'm sorry it went to you, Dan, with two spots. 
Um, you know, that's the way it's going to... Got to go to somebody, I guess. Dan, you're a champ. You'll handle it like one. But Kevin Biggio, he's a cool player. Blue Jays got a fun team, man. They got a fun team to watch. Thanks, Dan, for jumping in. Final card in the box going to Paul H. What could it be? Come on. Oh, man. CJ, you're going to like this, I think. <laughs> Dodger fans are going to like this. Oh, uh, I thought I was hoping it would have an autograph, but it's still team colors. Nice MLB patch. Blue parallel. 11 out of 30. Cody Bellinger going to Paul. That's a really gorgeous looking color and card. I would have loved to have seen an autograph on that for, for you and Dan there, but come on. Joking when I say this, but come on, Tops. You really have to put two relics in a product like this? Whatever. Come on. That's a gorgeous card, though, man. If that thing was signed, that would be in love, maybe. Loving the colors on that. Loving the colors on that. And that's our second box of uh, Definitive. We'll probably try to run another one or two, maybe even two boxes tomorrow for breaks. So if you missed out on these, uh, keep your eyes out. We might try to run through one or two more boxes tomorrow. But thanks to everybody who jumped into that box. Definitive. Gorgeous. Really a gorgeous product. Really is. Really is. We do have something on the table. Nick C. Nick C. Hustle. Wants to jump on some Inception. Yeah, there you go, Paul H. Yeah, it really is a gorgeous card. Are you a Dodger fan by chance, Paul H.? All right, Nick. Is the first of your two boxes of Incepcione. Looking like it's going to be a regular auto, no relic. Jordan on top. Bueller. Bueller. Boba Shet, Boba Fett, Cool Whit Merrifield, got a little Anthony Rendon. On the back side, we got Eddie Rosario, 10 out of 75. And the auto in this first box for Nick Miguel Yajur. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, to be honest. It's an on-card rookie auto, green parallel, out of 125, Yankees. If I get something outside of personals, do I still get reward points? Yeah, you should. Team reward points qualify for, I think, any purchases on our website, except for gift cards, <laughs> basically, for obvious reasons, but... Okay, that's box one for Nick. Box two. Live in New York. Grandma was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, though, so it's cool. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So you're a what? You're a Yankees guy then, Paul? Or was that you talking earlier? Who was it? Was it Paul H. earlier who said they were Braves? I don't remember. Who are you? Who are you a fan of? Constantly, people have to remind me things because there's so much stuff going through my head these days. Here's Buster Posey for Nick C. Alex Kirloff, rookie. <laughs> Sad too, huh? Hopefully this will make up for it all. You got some, some color back here. Look, four different colors back there. Kyle Lewis, 
You got Sixto Sanchez, rookie. You got Dylan Carlson, rookie, green. On the back, we got Jimenez, rookie, out of 150 on the purple. And the pink. Come on, be a good team. Ooh, I see Dodgers. Gavin Lux. Pink or red, 15 out of 75. Yeah, Colin M, grab some Project 70 cards that you might be interested in. There's a nice Gavin Lux here. Dodgers are putting some faith in him early on in the season. They want him uh they want him to want him to do well. I want him to do well too. I hope he does. I don't know if he will. I don't know why. I'm not super invested in Lux, but I do like the autographed card. I think it's a great looking card. Nick uh, Nick C, I hope you're happy with that. Ralph D in the house. What's up, Ralph? Paul, Yankee fan. There you go. Thurman Munson was your hero. There you go. Right on. And no, Sonny, I do not drive a Tesla. <laughs> not yet. I have driven a Tesla. But I do not own one. All right, we got a box of 2020 Panini Chronicles baseball for Carter. Carter B. Joanne likes Gavin Lux. Okay. Definitely was a nice card, Joanne. I won't disagree with you there. And Bubble Pug says Lux is from Wisconsin, so there might be a small crush developing there. I don't know. Carter B. with some 2020 Chronicles. This is fun. Cool. Start on the left. And if there's nothing on the table by the time I'm done with this Chronicles, then we'll probably call it a night. But if you guys want to get something else going on, place that order in the next few minutes. Down to rip a little later. Here's a Luis Robert rookie right on the front. Timeless Treasures. Cody Bellinger. Jonathan Daza. Bobby Bradley, a Mike Trout foil on the titanium, Francisco Lindor on the obsidian, and Cody Bellinger on the titan, and you got Max Scherzer on your uh, Spectra out of 75, Scherzer. Tatis, Bichette rookie, Acuna red parallel out of 100. Hit behind him. We also got Mendick. We got Bryce Harper on the certified. We've got Shohei Otani on the obsidian and Mike Trout, couple of back to back angels. Mike Trout on the Phoenix, and the hit from that pack. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, it's Jake Rogers. Out of 99 on the America's Pastime Autograph Relic. Nice. Okay. Carter B, next pack. Eric wanted to be like me, so he bought a 1985 Yugo. <laughs> Tim bringing up the Yugo. That's amazing. I haven't thought about a Yugo for so many years, man. We used to make fun of those cars around town because they were so small and cheesy looking. From Yugoslavia, the Yugo. Do you remember Le Car? I'm sure you remember Le Car out of 
France, I think, right? Le Frog. Here's Susugo. Here's Aquino. Here is Arenado. Here is Elvis Andrews on a Spectra not numbered. Did I not see Gavin Lux playing on opening day, CJ? He started, he started on opening day. Gavin Lux started on opening day. Sob. Sonny with the sob reference. <laughs> Tony says, my friend used to say you go, but the car doesn't. <laughs> Renault. Ex-wife number 12 had a lay car. That's hilarious, Tim. Tim, if you're ever in L.A., hit us up for beers, would you? Here's Nico Horner with Stanton. We got Kyle Lewis, little mosaic rookie. It's nice looking. And uh, Susugo rookie. Decent. Next pack for Carter B has Shogo Akiyama. Susugo, Bryce Harper, hit behind him. We'll set it there. We got Jordan, McKay, uh, Munoz, and Nico Horner. Numbered out of 75. Behind Harper, we have Ponce de Leon autograph out of the playbook line up here. Next pack for Carter B has Brennan McKay, Acuna, and Trey Turner. Something behind him. We also have Bo Bichette, Vlad Jr., Aquino, and Lux rookies back to back. It's a nice looking Lux prism. Speaking of Lux. And behind Trey Turner, we have Nick Senzel on a little soda pop blue relic. They introduced the lay car as the Renault 5 EV. It is sweet. I did not know that, actually. That they, that they reintroduced the lay car as the Renault. Gavin Lux went two for four on his first career opening day. That's all right. This uh, relic's numbered out of 99, by the way. And final pack for Carter B., and it looks like it's going to be the final pack of the night here, folks. Uh, and it's only Friday. We will be back tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, your uh, Coach Fletch, Hot Hands Fletcher, is scheduled to be hosting for us tomorrow, starting at 4 p.m. And you know how he does it. He likes to pull some heat, too. So come back join us tomorrow. Probably going to leave uh, most of these discounts live for tomorrow as well. Dylan Cease here, Jordan Alvarez there, Aaron Nola hit behind him. We got Shogo, we got Jordan, we got Shohei, and we got Luis Robert, season ticket rookie, base. And final hit of the evening. How about Aristides Aquino, Spectra, autographed relic rookie. On card. That is clean as a whistle. That is clean. That's a pretty looking card. Numbered out of 199. Now, hey, man. Maybe Aquino will start swinging the bat this season. That's a gorgeous card. It really is. Look at that autograph, man. That is slick. I like how he does the three dots. Two A's and three dots. Got a pretty cool auto.
Very nice looking card. Nice way to end the box and a decent way to end the evening. How are we looking, Siege? Good to tie it up. Folks, that's going to do it for us today. But I had fun the last couple of days hosting uh, today and yesterday for opening day especially. It's good to be back in town. It's good to reconnect with some of you guys here on the personal break stream. Join us tomorrow night. Fletcher's going to be here hosting. Hopefully pulling some more heat. And uh, that's it. That's all I got to say. <clears throat> National League MVP prediction for this year is Seager. Brandon H., glad I'm not the only one that thinks Seager can win MVP. <laughs> Great. Well, folks, that'll do it for us here at Hall of Fame Baseball Cards, Arcadia, California. Thanks to CJ for helping us out. Thanks to Bubble Pug for the good vibes. Thanks to Joanne and everybody else who jumped into breaks tonight. We appreciate your physical support, and we appreciate your uh, positive energy, not only here in our chat, but we hope you take that out into the world. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all tomorrow night. Get some rest. Peace. <laughs>